Hi, I'm Choi Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about a recent case of longitudinal stent compression uh, that happened uh, during a STEMI. Uh, longitudinal stent compression is now a rare and probably underappreciated uh, complication. The patient's a 70-year-old um, woman with a history of stenting of the distal RCA into the PDA several years ago, uh, who uh, presented with crushing chest pain after a couple of days of uh, stuttering discomfort. Her ECG showed clear uh, inferior ST elevations and um, she was taken to the lab. Um, so cath showed mild disease in the LED. Uh, there was an 80% stenosis in the proximal circumflex and the uh, clear culprit uh, is this 100% uh, uh, thrombotic occlusion uh, in the proximal RCA. So I went in with my standard uh, inferior STEMI equipment, uh, the uh, JR4 engaged easily. Uh, I could not get a BMW to cross, but a Pilot 50 crossed easily, and I exchanged it to a ProWater. Uh, we pre-dilated with a 25 by 12 millimeter uh, compliant balloon. So after initial dilation, uh, we have restored flow in the RCA. Uh, you can see that there is embolized thrombus in the uh, distal RCA and in the uh, first uh, posterolateral branch. Um, and uh, the PLB is actually still subtotally occluded. And then went ahead and stented the proximal RCA with a uh, 35 by 18 millimeter DES, uh, which I uh, post dilated with a 4.0 uh, NC balloon. So the uh, proximal RCA now looks uh, reasonably good after stenting. Um, there is still thrombus in the distal RCA, uh, but you can see that the postulateral branch is starting to open up now a little bit more. I uh, thought about just stopping here and uh, get the patient on a, a 2B3 A inhibitor, but uh, she was still having pain, so I decided to do uh, a little more. I uh, wired the postulateral branch with the BMW and gently, post di uh, gently dilated with a 2O by 20 millimeter compliant balloon. I also then dilated the distal uh, RCA into the PDA uh, with a 3O by 12 millimeter balloon. So after dilation, the distal RCA, PDA, and postulateral branch looked a bit better, and um, I was going to stop here. But if you look carefully at the proximal RCA, uh, there seems to be a subtle darkening and possible dye hang up uh, within the stent. And honestly, I did not notice this at first. Uh, the uh, tech uh, noticed it. It's actually quite subtle. Um, here it is side by side. Uh, you see the subtle darkening in the stented segment uh, that wasn't really there before. Now, given her STEMI, I was worried that there might be thrombus building up within the stent. I asked the nurse to start a 2B3A inhibitor, and we also got a repeat ACT, which was nicely therapeutic at 317. So is this acute stent thrombosis? Well, the answer is no. Uh, we did an IVIS, and as you can see, IVIS showed what looks like multiple layers of stents in the proximal RCA. But the patient's previous stent was in the distal RCA, and we now just put one stent in the proximal RCA. So how could this be? Well, the answer becomes clear on stent boost imaging. You can see here that the proximal edge of the stent is folded in on itself. This turned out to be a case of longitudinal stent compression. So what I think probably happened is that despite post-dilating our stent with a 4O and C balloon, the proximal edge of the stents was still malopposed. Uh, the guide was going back and forth in the RCA when we were working on the distal RCA branches, and at some point it probably hit and mashed the proximal edge of the stent, and most likely when we were pulling out one of the distal RCA balloons. So thankfully, uh, our stent was not deformed too badly. Uh, a 4.5 by 12 millimeter balloon uh, recrossed easily. Uh, if the stent had been more deformed, we would have had to serially dilate up. And in the worst case scenario, we might even have had to start with a torqueable uh, taper microcatheter to stretch open the lumen uh, before balloons can cross. I then deployed a big overlapping 4.5 by 15 millimeter DES, which inflated nicely. 
and we post dilated at very high pressure uh, with a 4.5 by 12 millimeter NC balloon. I did a repeat IVIS, uh, which as you can see now shows uh, well expanded and nicely opposed stents uh, in the uh, proximal RCA. So um, here is the final angiographic result, which looked uh, quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient had an uneventful ICU stay and returned uh, two days later for elective PCI of that 80% uh, circumflex stenosis uh, for a complete uh, revascularization. All right, take home messages. So longitudinal stent compression is now fairly rare. Um, it was uh, more commonly seen about a decade ago uh, with the Promis element stents, and these are uh, no longer available uh, in, uh, in the United States. Um, undersized or malopose stents are more uh, susceptible to compression, so it's important uh, to post-dilate your stent well uh, before working on more distal lesions. And as you saw from this case, uh, longitudinal stent compression can be quite subtle angiographically. Uh, you might suspect it for proximal stents, especially in STEMI scenarios, if the guide is going in and out uh, during the case. Uh, this is because vessels are frequently vasoconstricted at the start of a STEMI and can grow and enlarge as the case goes on, uh, causing your stent to become malopposed. The same thing can also happen with more distal stents uh, if you are deeply intubating with a guide extension catheter or going back and forth uh, with uh, bulky equipment. Uh, intravascular imaging and stent boost are very helpful uh, in making the diagnosis. Uh, treatment is uh, redilating the compressed stent and restenting uh, with a larger overlapping stent. Thank you for watching.